Okay, it's live. All right. Hey, this, hey guys, this is Delta, and I've, this is the welcome to the Alt Right Show with the Center Right Federation. Yeah, and for those of you guys who are, because I'm going to be re-uploading this for this for those of you guys watching this right now, it might be a shock, but just to let you guys know, I'm just going to be joining Hangouts from other people's channels, and then I'm going to be re-uploading it on my channel. But however, I'm still retired. I won't be hosting them, and I won't be editing my own, but I'll be joining others and probably re-upload them. If I your shit's cutting out. Wait, all right. mm-hmm. Wait, huh? hold up. Disdain for cuckolds. <laughs> all right, um, but you heard what I said, right? Oh yeah, of course. All right. So, what do you want to talk about? Um, degeneracy. Uh, degeneracy, like the slippery slope thing's kind of been on my mind for a while. Yeah. I know Nero's gonna watch this. I know he says it's a fallacy, but in this all. When it comes to the perversion, it's no, it's no fallacy. It's pretty real. Yeah. Put your thoughts on it, cause I'll, I'll go last. Well, I mean, the the like you're referring to like how they're trying to normalize pedophilia, right? Yeah, yeah. Incest is first, though. Like that's the that's. The oh next yeah. Thing. Yeah, like nowadays, I've seen articles where like many people who claim to have been um LGBT activists are also trying to like make incest normal. Yeah, I. You saw what I did, where right? I shared like an article. It says dad and daughter in incest relationship demand right to bring up a child. They... Oh, that is <laughs> disgusting, dude. It's like... Oh yeah, even in some other countries, I heard that most leftists are creating these like robots that look like children. Oh, pedophiles. Oh, that that Volicon crap in Japan. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, that's the stain for degenerates intensifies. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, man, it's, what have we come to at this point? Exactly. And lately, we've heard about the Dindu riots in Chicago. Too. Oh, the nigger riots. Oh, the chimp out in Chicago that happened? Yeah, the, the, the chimp out that's happening. So, like, I love that. That's a good one, though. The chimp out. <laughs> a, a bunch of, like... So, this is basically what happened. This kid was in a car. I forgot, like, the whole story of it. I'll, I'll have to look into it again. But I heard that the cops confronted him. He pointed. He's 16 years old, and he pointed the his gun at the police officers. And when he pointed the gun at the police officers, the police officers shot him in self defense. But yet, we have we have Dindus and pretty much left left wing activists in them, like and like you know the Dindu lives matter going around protesting, even though they don't give a fuck about Black lives at all. I was watching like a vice team, like on like in whole Poland. There's like all these nationals hold like the, these rallies. Like I don't think how often it is, but like they've heard of like violent feuds. But like some guy went to one of them. Like there wasn't really any violence because the government's been leaning pretty right in Poland. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so that, that's why I'm proud of them. Eastern Europe. They're not as cucked. I'm like, oh, I might take some inspiration from Poland and actually take a march yeah poland once burned the rainbow of diversity in their country although they burned that bridge for good i can, <laughs> I can tell right now yeah like, the, uh, no, like, nope. the reason why many of these like countries in eastern europe are not as cucked as like western europe is because many of them lived under communism so they know like the stupidities and the dangers of leftism all those degenerates are like nah yeah, but they don't want that cultural Marxist trash. They don't want it in there, so they're like... <laughs> yeah, so so what do you think of, of people who deny the existence of cultural Marxism? It's pretty... It's insanity, to be honest. I've seen, I've seen a lot of leftists that go, oh, no, that's just a right-wing conspiracy theory, and I'm all... They can call it progressivism if they want. Like, it has many names. You can say it's cultural Marxism, progressivism. It's all the same thing. Or the regressive left. The regressive left. I think commies don't like it when you call it cultural Marxism. That's where they get triggered. <laughs> well, they are cultural Marxist little pigs. Oh, I know. I, I know. I have left this. They're like, oh my god, stupid right winger. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I mean, like, like the thing is, you don't even have to hear it from me, though. If you were to just read Antonio's Grant Gramsci's cultural hegemony, if you were to see what what Herbert. I forget how to say his last name, Herbert Marcuse um, and Mark Hochheimer and all these other people from the Frankfurt School said, all, all of it relates to what's happening till this day. What do you mean, Herbert Marcuse? <laughs> like Herbert the pervert kind of thing? 
Yeah. Like, hey, Mark, kid, you want oh, some free no, no, he's like, hey, kid, you want some free college? <laughs> uh, gross. No, it's. I bet he is like a Herbert, Herbert the pervert kind of thing. Ugh. Yeah. Cringeworthy on so many levels. When most of his cringeworthy release is funny. It's literally angry bastards. <laughs> I, um. Retarded, I'm like, so, so do you think we could also talk about Israel? Well, sure, because I know both of us are pretty strong Israel advocates. Yep, I, 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 I support its right to exist. Yeah, too bad lefties on the channel who get asked here. Me, me, me. Nah, tough shit. This is my channel. <laughs> exactly, and plus Zionism isn't even fascism. It's well, it's not. It doesn't uphold anything. I haven't people. Well, I've heard. What was it? Red Scare TV said. I'm like, that's like wrong, dude. You're an idiot. I'm sorry. See, here's the thing about Israel. This is why I support it. Like, I'm very critical of Israel. I'm, you, you know, I am. I'm super. You don't agree with everything. You're not like this 100 percent kind of thing. Yeah, but however, I do, I do think that they have the right to exist because yeah. remember how Palestine originally was Judea, where the Jews lived. Oh yeah, during the ancient times and shit. Well, every time you talk to one of these guys about like the history, they only go back to like 200 years because they want to. Because they want to go prove that it was all Arab at one point. I'm like, well, Arab, the Arabs conquered it. Technically, no. But technically, we, keep, we should give it back to the Canaanites. And, oh, wait, the Canaanites don't, are not around anymore. Exactly. Oh. I don't know if you left this will get triggered, but so what? Yeah. The, the Gaza hollow hoax. Hollow hoax, yeah. Yeah, I know a freaking guy. I'm not gonna mention any names here. Two, two of them. They're gonna get so triggered that you're, you're shooting the Jews. It's a war, though. I don't care. It, it, it's a war, though. It's not a genocide. A genocide is when, like, let's say one group is wiping out the other group. Oh, so, well, they are wiping out the other group. That only happens during the war, you moron. Yeah, exactly. It, it's literally, it's literally both sides killing each other. So it's not a genocide. Yeah, and, and these, and these big. Battles don't break out so frequently. Like the left will tell you it's every day, but that's not true. But see, the, and I also took Tom's advice as well. See, the, the thing is, these people are not intellectually honest because they do not apply the same standards that they will for others. For oh example, yeah, of course they will. They'll say the crimes of fascism and say communism didn't do nothing. I'm like, sure, mate. And, and then, and like, let's say they want self determination for Arabs, Black Africans, except for white. But except for white people and Jews, whites and Jews are like the are the only ones who can't have it because they're racist. Sure, because yeah, they're a bunch of ra evil, racist, fascist, Nazi yes. bigots. Yes, it's like who cares? <laughs> I love one of Rock Mister East was like the gay roller. It's like it's like oh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's literally it's become gay roller. It's like oh shit. <laughs> then one, someone who cannot be named says that Manuel is a Pinochet supporter. He continues to no, talk about not. it. No, how I a, think. Like, how is he a, a Pinochet supporter just because he was playing around? <laughs> yeah, he's dicking around there for now. It's true. I showed what that post. Pinochet stand on it. it says Bernie Sanders supporters get free helicopter rides. <laughs> you saw that there. Right? Like, yeah, they, they get free helicopter rides. L literally, they're only voting for Bernie Sanders because of free stuff, even though free stuff doesn't exist. What about? I got a good idea. I got a good tip for you, Bernie Sanders supporters. You get free helicopter rides. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ride. Oh, yeah. Leftist memes made a meme that, that shows um, Pinochet and it shows uh, Bernie Sanders and then it says Bernie Sanders asked him, I heard you give free stuff, what is it? And then Pinochet said helicopter rides and then <laughs> and then Bernie Sanders got sad. Oh, I say helicopter rides. <laughs> <laughs> or culturally enriched people being thrown from helicopters. Conservatives and right wing libertarians, Pinochet. Pinochet. Yeah, what a troll. Yeah, let's forget that guy though, he used to troll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've avo you know avoided that freak, and he still talks about us. <laughs> oh, dude, and, and you know how um how many times they they talk about how um North North Korea should remain homogenous. So what's wrong if Europeans or Jews or any or any of these other groups want to remain homogenous? So the Jews, I think, in Israel, they're trying to remain pretty homogenous, and yet they're getting yelled at for it. Yeah, and white people are getting yelled at for it too, and it's like you're racist. But when when Arabs do it, that's fine. We should allow that. E even though most of those Arabs read Mein Kampf to deny the Holocaust. Oh, I think Tom's here. Oh, hey Tom, what's up? 
Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, so I, heard you guys, I heard you guys talking about uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, and helicopter rides. Yeah, you, you, you want to talk about Bernie Sanders? Yeah, well, uh, there, there's an interesting um, point that a lot of right wingers make about Bernie Sanders. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, in our camp who actually want Bernie Sanders to win the election because, according to them, if he becomes president of the United States, he's going to just run the economy into the ground. He's going to enact so many policies that will have such a, such a, a destructive effect that it will pretty much cripple the American economy and it will, in a sense, create a, uh, like a right-wing uprising. Oh, dude, that's what I am praying for. And, the, and here's the thing. Although I do not like... <clears throat> like the, the thing is, although I do not want Bernie Sanders to win... But if he does win, I just want the American people to learn their lesson about electing socialists. Yeah, things are going to get so bad if Bernie Sanders or even Hillary Clinton get elected. Oh. Because, like, it, it, like it, it's going to become clear to everybody it, it, under uh, Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders' presidency that the government does not, does not stand for the principles that the United States was founded on. That is liberty, you know, freedom, and being able to pursue your own happiness. It's basically it would basically just become an autocratic, uh, just dystopian, uh, corrupt government that just works in the interests of you know socialists and people who have uh, who have social pull. The yeah, thing is, exactly. like, I, even though I like Donald Trump and I want him to be elected president, I think that if he is elected president, a lot of the strong right-wing sentiment, especially, like, on the internet, is going to die down a lot. Because his, his, like, if he becomes elected, it's going to act essentially as a pressure valve that will release a lot of the frustrations that people have about just, like, immigration and racial tensions and all that. And I think that, you know, the alt-right is going to die down a lot if Donald Trump is elected. Well, I don't, it's almost to be fair, I don't think he's even going to get elected because George Soros wouldn't allow that to happen. Yeah, but there, there's so many people who want him in office. Like, they can't ignore it anymore. They, they've been trying to do that for so long. They've been, you know, downplaying his popularity and, uh, you know, trying to rig the, uh, the primaries against him. But, like, they can only do that for so long before, you know, the, the will of the people just triumph. You know what I mean? Oh, that's true. Like, Same thing with, like, Putin. Like, well, Putin, everything was rigged, and now there's, like... Yeah, I, I think it's people hate likely, him. I think it's very likely that Trump will get the the Republican nomination at the very least. Yeah, it's like that's no doubt about that. But who's gonna win the election? People think Clinton because she has tits and a taco. So everyone's gonna go. Oh, she has boobies. Let's vote for her. <laughs> yeah, but she's not even popular among women. She's popular among like ethnic minorities and poor people. And, oh, of course, because uh, really not... beta cuck males, but oh, cuckolds! I, I think her approval rating among women is only like thirty nine percent or something like that. Because most, like, the thing you have to understand, like, women are very critical of other women. So they see somebody like Hillary Clinton, who is so shrill and obviously fake. She doesn't really believe the things that she's saying. They can see right through her. So to other women, she's just like, you know. She's, she's, like, the least desirable option for president. This is freaking nasty. Yeah. In fact, Donald Trump is actually quite popular among certain demographics of women, even though he's labeled as a misogynist and a sexist and all these oh, things. Trust me, I'd be labeled as a misogynist among even just regular liberals. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't kowtow to social justice warriors is a misogynist. Well, it's not even that. I've even heard, like, I mean by, like, regular liberals, like, Sargon-type people because of my extreme right viewpoints. Yeah, like, he believes that women should just go back to the kitchen and just bring back the patriarchy. It's like, well, that's the only way you're going to destroy feminism, really. You can't, you, they're like, oh, mission accomplished. I'm like, if you want to really destroy it, do a Franco. Yeah. Well, I, I'm actually, that, that's interesting because I'm actually working on a video right now uh, about, um, like, the, the decline in traditional gender roles and uh, the family. That's the only way to salvage it, really, to be yeah, honest. Some people are like... That, you know how we are just talking about cultural Marxism earlier? Yeah. Speaking about that, one of the cultural Marxist goals is to, get, is to destroy the family. It's in the Communist Manifesto and the Gay Liberation Manifesto. And I'm glad Tom brought that up. 
Well, yeah, because, um, well, I mean, I would argue that they've already done that. I mean, the, uh, apart from, you know, people who, like, apart from some people in the United States who are, you know, of a religious persuasion, the nuclear family is pretty much dead because of no-fault divorce and feminism and cultural Marxism, just social pressures uh, against uh, having a, a traditional nuclear family. I think that at this point, unless we uh, initiate radical social change, then the nuclear family is pretty much gone. Oh, like what the Falange did in Spain. That's what I'm... Yeah. Well, hey. that's, what, that's what I'm saying. We have to go to that extreme. I don't may not I may not want to personally because of certain moral obligations, but we kind of have to. There's almost no choice left. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm praising Adolf Hitler, but what he did when he came to power was, uh, in regards to you know encouraging family and childbirth, was ab absolutely genius. What he did is he gave um, newly wedded couples uh, a loan of a hundred thousand dollars. And um, for every child that they had, they only, uh, they, they got, like, the $50,000 of the loan was forgiven. So if, if, if a couple got married and they had two children, then they got to keep the $100,000. And what this did is it caused a huge uh, boom in the rate of uh, marriages and the rate of uh, childbirth. And the money that the government had given out was repaid within two years. So I think that we need, if, if we need to um, encourage uh, people to get married and have children and, you know, have stable monogamous relationships, the thing to do is, you know, to have the government encourage people financially, either through taxes or by giving out uh, loans as they did in the Third Reich or, you know, some other such thing. But the way things are right now, where the government almost incentivizes people to get divorced through, you know, alimony and child support and, you know, just the general corruption of family courts in general, I think that uh, people, like, the nuclear family is in decline, for sure. Well, it's basically dead. It's a therapeutic state. Greetings and salutations, gentlemen. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I sent in the link so you could join. Yeah, thank you, Delta. Welcome back to welcome to the alt right show. Yeah, oh, yeah, I seen it. It seemed it became the show rather than the podcast. Yeah, it was, it was the alt right hangout. Now it's the um, Ethan. Uh, I'm just telling you, you're showing your face. Gasp! <laughs> Shit! They're gonna they're gonna dox drop us now. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, Mr. Marrero. Hey, I got that. Um, the uh the the link you sent me about that song you wanted me to make I'm not familiar with that song though I don't know I don't have any idea how it's supposed to go aside from a general cadence from the uh the, the music on the sheet itself this is cringeworthy I'm looking at this article about how a freaking apparently some freaking mom's dating her own son this is, this is cringeworthy on so many levels oh that's like those southern dance hall things where the um <clears throat> no this is in England this is that this whole thing actually is happening in it's actually in England, I think. Oh, I just wanted to say they remind me of the um the father daughter dance balls where the fathers take out their daughters to dance, but they get them all dolled up and they they dress with them all night. It's really creepy stuff. Oh, like that stuff's cringeworthy. It's the next big push by the left. Yeah, actually, uh, I think uh, Common Filth did uh, an episode about what you're talking about, Delta. How oh, incest is, uh, and shit. Yeah, the son is marrying the the mother and. Cause, like, what? Yeah, cause well, apparently well, they're, they're in America, and like the U.S. Really authorities, I think, are looking for them. Yeah, they they were estranged for a really long time, and then the the two met in adulthood, and apparently they fell in love. And yeah, they're okay. gonna have a bunch of American there. authorities are like trying to get them now. It's like get back here, <laughs> trying to nab them. It's like you better well, catch that raises them. That's an interesting point. I think. Do we believe um, that that is something which should be uh, punishable under the law, or merely a social taboo? It's freaking gross. If it if happens, that kind of inbreeding happens enough, you get ge like genetic diseases and shit. Right, right, right. Good. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to ask you to attempt to be detached and and think about this uh, unemotionally because you can't you can't have laws based off of nothing but emotion. Um, so, yes, what you said is true, really but this, this is science. never it's, it's proven by science at that point. Yeah, so. but no, 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 hold, hold on a second. Yeah, wait, I just wait, wait, to let, say that. let me speak. 
Let me speak. Are you saying because you're saying uh, that incest is unhealthy, but like if that was the case, why not just put regulations to prevent people to drink Coca-Cola, which is unhealthy, or ban burgers? Like, well, I'm sorry, trying to do that incest though. Is different though, because in breeding, it weakens the genetic stock of the country. And people it does just it's generally yeah, but we have all that, we, we, it's, look at the royal families of like the European. Look at the European royal families. How they're, they're yeah. close, like they're closely related. And it's, Wait, whereas drinking Coca Cola is just an individual choice. I mean, you can choose not to drink Coke, uh, but you can't choose not to be inbred. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, but basically, anybody is inbred. We all related. Uh, it was a good video by Vsauce that was proof that we all related. We're, we're all part of the same that, species. What does that even prove? No, they found if you look at the Roman Empire, the population was so low that the only way to increase was to commit incest. Well, Rome, Rome was full of perversion to begin with, so it's yeah, and and that perversion is what caused their collapse. Oh well, they, I won't say that it was because uh, invasions by the Mongols and Mongols. No, it was the Mongols. What's no. empire? Rome grew so big it. Collapse on itself. Well, that that was the Visigoths uh, and some of the invaders had something to do with that overexpansion, and then decline in morals. But um, that's kind of off topic. Um, I, I I tend to agree with um with Delta on this, uh, Luis, because <clears throat> well, I think the I think the best argument there is that it's it's not a, a choice that uh, the the unborn can make, right? And and you would agree. I think you would agree that. <clears throat> There's a certain point at which um, the dysgenic effects of uh, really, really severe inbreeding become, you know, noticeable and a problem. You know, it's like I, I get what you're saying, but I mean, <clears throat> if you have like uh, mothers uh, screwing sons for several generations, it's gonna really fuck up the gene pools. Or even fathers and daughters, like it's gonna. Or, yeah, anything, anything. Yeah, so it, Cater, to answer your question uh, about whether we should discourage uh, uh, inbreeding through laws or just by social pressures, I think that there definitely need to be laws that penalize this conduct because if you look at many cultures, inbreeding is actually uh, acceptable. For instance, uh, among Jewish people, consanguinity is very common. In fact, they people are encouraged to marry. Uh, like not not necessarily within the family, but other people of uh, you know, the same um, you know the same faith and the same uh, like the same uh, I don't know the same neighborhood I guess but same race too the, yeah that's why yeah. Albert Einstein married um, his uh, second cousin yeah so if if you don't have the laws uh, penalizing uh, incest then you're gonna have it's going to be a lot more common, and as you said, the yeah, the, 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 the thing though, um, but we really need more people. Like we were, we are overpopulated. Well, maybe Africa is overpopulated. But yeah, it depends where you're talking about. Yeah, the least. first world it's gotten so secular that like birth rates are not very high. It's most among like the Arab nations and third world countries. Yeah, birth rates among like Germans and Sweden. Swedish and even uh, you know Canadians of European descent is very low. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree. I'm talking um, about the I, United States. It's the third most populated country in the world, behind India and China. Uh, anyways, I, I, um, I was just curious what everybody else thought. I, I mean, the opinion that you and uh, Delta espoused were essentially pretty much the one I had. Um, also, um, Cater, what happened to the video you uploaded when you were so announcing some sort of live broadcast and you were showing your face and you deleted mm -hmm. it? Oh, I always delete them uh, just because they don't serve any purpose after I have my broadcast. Oh, yeah, and, that's true. Yeah, so uh, I just figured it would you know, be a waste of, yeah. uh, uh, waste of time to, you know, uh, not my time, but a waste of your time. You know, anybody else who watches it and then they go, oh, there's a live stream happening and they go check it out and nothing's there because I usually don't put them up on my channel. I've had four of them thus far, and the only one I put up was the first one with Alan. But I also have a question. Um, this yeah. could be about gay marriage. Like Ethan pointed out that it increased cancer, but basically anything can come. Um, uh, that's the same exact excuse I hear um, heard.
from uh, vegans, vegans, super hardcore vegans are saying that, oh, eating meat can increase cancer, and you should not eat meat. Sorry. So, well, technically, the whole gay thing is a state's rights issue, if I had to have an opinion. I Wait, think so marriage should be private. Oh, hold on, I, I don't what's entirely... The point of paper, like, what's the point of marriage? Oh, it's just the only thing that's going to benefit is um, Christian homosexuals or Jewish homosexuals. Christian Most homosexuals, homosexuals. I think that's really an oxymoron, but okay, it's but people can disagree with me on that. I think Milo Yiannopoulos is a Christian homosexual. Yes, he is. Catholic, actually. Or at least so he says. I mean, yeah. um, it should be something voluntary. Like, what's the point of freaking wait, marriage? Wait, 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 like, hold on, hold on, hold on, Louis. Louis, I, I, I didn't Hold on a second, Louis. Oh, I, I didn't entirely. You kind of asked me a question, and then you jumped on something else. So I just wanted to get the question down. What was Ethan had said what now earlier? Something about vegans? I kind of missed that. Okay, that was, that, that was Louis. I said, Ethan pointed out that. Homo, um, anal sex or like gay sex can increase cancer. Okay. And I said that's the same argument I heard from vegans, like vegan gains, who gives death threat to everyone who dis who disagrees with him. Uh, <laughs> that that oh, eating meat can increase cancer, and also scientists discovered that Coca Cola can cause cancer. S s look, staying in the sun for long can cause cancer. Yeah, Basically, well, anything. Can cause oh, come cancer. on, Louis. That's like the well, argument of like a like a feminist saying like, oh, I can be dressed modestly, and I can get raped. Like that's not a, really an argument. Like you could get. Well, get I think his first. But it's always a risk on everything. Well, Delta, I think his first point was actually pretty good. Um, the the rest the rest of your examples became a little more progressively, um, tangential. But just just yeah. Well, I'm coming back. <laughs> Anyways, um, I would have to see the. The data on on what gives you cancer and what doesn't. I'm I'm not particularly well educated on that. That used I used to be a, a joke uh, around my circle of friends that every time you watch the news, there's some new scientific discovery that has indicated your favorite beverage in you know some kind of horrible cancer, and then they they come back and say these test results weren't conclusive. So when you speak about uh, tests, you have to know who did the test. Are they reputable? What was the, t the metric for the test? Was it a double blind test? Was it falsifiable? Et cetera, et cetera, and uh, really need to know the facts in in regards to that because otherwise, you know, anybody can claim anything. And yeah, I I think that if you are going to make a, a moral uh, argument for why uh, anal sex is bad, you don't even need you don't even need to talk about cancer. You just need to uh, address the fact that it leads to other transmittable diseases like HIV and uh, it's just adverse and health outcomes. And, Clitor uh, chlamydia, and it's just yeah, like, a general health hazard. Yeah, yeah so, most yeah. people they bring religion, then it just gets blown off. People go, oh, "You're just a stupid religious nut." I'm like, the best argument is to say it has adverse health outcomes. In that case. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. But the arguments that uh, like people make in favor of uh, you know the the of like anal sex being moral is that oh you know it's just two consenting adults it doesn't affect anybody but if you're in, engaging in a behavior that increases your likelihood of transmitting diseases then that's a public health risk and that does affect other people yeah, that's right but I mean it doesn't affect there's... society stop forcing your morals on us no, I would say that there's a much to be said about um, you know safe sex practices and knowing who your partner is um, so, I know I'm probably in uh, opposition to most of you, but you know I have absolutely nothing against uh, a homosexual act or homosexuals. Um, it's, it's certain a, a subculture of them that I find uh, thoroughly tr troubling and uh, destructive, and and kind of creepy. <laughs> oh, like I find there's a there's a subculture of black people I don't like. Yeah, I well yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Peter, I, I would agree with you on that. It's just that it, it like, I, I don't personally think that there's anything wrong with homosexual acts per se, but if you were going to make a, a moral argument against it, then that's, what, that's probably the most obvious one that you can make. Oh, I see. So how come you became a SEAL? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't know. I, I figure uh, <laughs> everybody needs a sock account. I have a couple. It's a good picture. I, I feel like if you were an animal, you would definitely be a seal. Oh, leopard seal. 
Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a very appropriate picture, and it's a leopard seal. They're very fascinating creatures. Probably pick oh. a better one where it's more angry or something. Here's a good question for you. If we were all animals, what kind of animal would you be? Now, we already know. I'd, he'd I'd be probably a be a fossil at this point because I'm so backwards. A tiger? <laughs> a, t- a tiger. A tiger. would be a tiger. What about you, Luis? Well, uh, my favorite animal is the lion, but I would say a bearded dog. dragon because it matched my personality. A dragon. A bearded oh, so, dragon. It's a type uh, of <laughs> lizard. <laughs> oh, it's a I lizard. I just started oh, dragon. Like all right, all right. I was like, curious. I, I gave care to the good ones. Like, probably be a fossil in a museum. <laughs> I'm so I'm so backwards and intolerant. I don't know. What about, what about you, Cater? What? I have a question oh, for I, everyone. I have no idea. What do you think I am? A wolf. <laughs> a a wolf. Every, Don't even ask me the question. I already have, like, you can I'll go through my old profile picture. I, I, I know, I know. I know. A you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Hey, I have uh, a question for everyone. I already know where Delta stands on this, but I was wondering what Cater, Luis, or Tom stand on this issue. The issue about okay. trans. Uh, I don't oh. really have much of. <clears throat> I don't. I don't really have a uh, terribly um, emotional attachment to to these questions, but I'd say the one thing that uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about this is um, how there are these centers that are being set up to help kids transition, um, whatever that exactly means. Oh, and, God. Um, you know, to, to what extent uh, it's often murky, but I think that is horrible um, to attempt to get kids to mutilate themselves and think of themselves as an opposite gender. Um, I, I think that's that's Where quite this horrible. agender trash that the left likes to push too. Uh, yeah, and <clears throat> well, it's not it's, it's not always the left. We should be you know it's it's or not it's the libertarians the left or the cuck right in general. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, cuck rights, greatest too. I, I have a question. Like, uh, why is Ethan now a part of the ultra right arm? Uh, does like it means like you're sort of a fascist now. No, or? he's not a fascist. No. Him and I don't line up economically, or on other issues. Well, the uh, the that's a the the term the alt right is a very broad blanket, Luis, and th- there's only a couple of main tenets to it really, uh, and and one of those is uh, being anti-egalitarian. Another is being against the particular strain of Buckleyite neoconservatism that has essentially taken over the GOP uh, in America, um, and, and so on and so forth. But it's not a rigid uh, coda of principles. That's why it's not a movement. It's just sort of a broad generalization. Yeah, well, I mean, like going, going back to uh, uh, transsexualism for a second, uh, to be honest, I don't really care uh, if somebody wants to, you know, uh, chop their penis off and wear a dress and change their name or whatever. Uh, what, what I have a problem with is when these individuals try to alter other people's perceptions of them. Because you're free to do what you want with your own body, but you're not free to change how other people perceive you. Just like, I, I'm free to make whatever YouTube videos I want, but I don't I don't have the freedom to make other people uh, like them or you know, agree with me. Just like, like I find it, it's sort of indicative of a deep-seated narcissism when people uh, who transition they get angry when other people don't, you know, use the proper pronouns or they misgender them or they, you know, accidentally say, uh, you know, sir instead of uh, miss. And I think that. In general, transsexualism is indicative of general, like, a, like body di- a body dysphoria. For instance, there is um, there's an episode of Jerry Springer. I know I watched Jerry Springer. I'm degenerate. Where <laughs> some guy comes on and he's like, you know what, Jerry? I'm glad I cut off my legs with a table saw, because you know his whole life he wanted he he 
he thought that, you know, I don't need my legs. My legs shouldn't be there. They need to be removed. And guess what? This person was also a, a transsexual, male to female. So I think that transsexualism should be treated as a mental disorder and not something that's just, you know, it's just a part of your personality, man. You were just born in the wrong body and you need to, you know, take these <sighs> hormones and, you know, that's bull crap. Call with Dr. Shekelstein mm -hmm. so he can, you know, remove your boy parts and uh, turn you into little Susie, you know? I, I think that's abhorrent and it needs to... Like that guy who became Stephanie? Ugh. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's just... That's just another I, level of perversion and degeneracy right there. Can I, uh, can I, can I say my opinion? In my sure. opinion, uh, transgenderism is very taboo. In my opinion, uh, you could do with whatever, whatever you want with your body because I can, we cannot afford. Yeah. Eat your dinner, Luis. The inner degeneracy and Finish your asparagus. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> Damn, I wanted to hear the rest of his point. Anyways, Vlad, that was a great uh, little spiel you did there. I completely agree. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wanted I said, to add... I, I'm sorry, Delta, what's that? Okay, I was going to say, like, when they, when they say, oh, we need to give them their... We need to help them transition. If, they, if they're a man and they identify as a woman, give them testosterone. It's like, just give them what... Give them the hormones that go with the sex they are. Yeah, the thing is, like, 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 like okay, most of the people. Well, one second, Ethan. Most of the the transsexuals who receive uh, this like hormone and surgery, sur surgical treatment, they're not any better after they've undergone this treatment than before. I mean, they still have such a high rate of suicide and a high rate of depression after receiving the treatment because it doesn't address the underlying causes of why they're feeling this way, which is body dysphoria. So I think we need to treat that rather than just you know giving them hormones and turning them into distorted simulacra of the opposite sex. Right, but what would you say, let me play devil's advocate here, So what? because uh, I've heard this a lot, the only reason they're committing suicide at these staggering rates is because of the societal taboo against who they are. And so the true answer, uh, many people will say, is that you need to change the society to be more accommodating to them, okay, to the centers sorry. and so forth. So okay, what would you say my opinion, you could you could do whatever you want with your body, but don't promote it <clears throat> to little children. Like this. they're not old enough to. When you change your body, that has to be. You have to make sure that it's the right decision for you. You cannot because many times uh, it's like it's gonna affect your body, and it's gonna be hard to get gain that back. Look, for example, with some transgender. Uh, a guy who, in the age of 18, uh, transitioned to a woman. Now, in the age of 20, he wants to be a man again. Okay, well, in response to your point, Cater, I think oh, I'm not a I'm not a psychologist. Uh, I only have like a layman's understanding of psychology, but I I don't think that either myself or social justice warriors can say why these people are committing suicide. I mean, maybe it's it has something to do with uh, social pressures, but I think that uh, like the underlying mental diseases certainly have, uh, they, they certainly play a big role in, in this high rate of suicide. That's a very concise answer, yeah. Yes. I was only playing devil's advocate, that's not my position. Yeah, I know. Got to keep things interesting. Uh, that's, or we need to, we need to, we need to, it's only, the only reason that the people, they, I feel like, some people I'm not going to mention, they say the only reason why they commit suicide is because they're stigmat because it's stigmatized or something. I'm like, hmm, I doubt yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that was essentially my point. That is nonsense, really. It's, it's mostly they're confused, like I said in the first shit posting. Who wants to live like that? Like, what am I? Well, I, I, I would be persuaded by that, but I think I think Vlad is right when he said we, we can't know these people's minds, uh, certainly not on any definite basis. We'd actually... We'd, the only way you could do that is with very sophisticated uh, MRI, brain imaging scans, uh, fMRIs, and so forth, and very extensive uh, <clears throat> double-blind tests with huge numbers of subjects over many years. Yeah, and in many different cultures, mind you. And, uh, yeah, 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 right. And so that, that would be an enormous undertaking. One that would be interesting, and I think worthwhile, but um, I'm unaware of any such um, just being since, you know, transgenderism is such a um, sorry what's that Delta? I said I was saying because the left thinks they commit suicide just because they're discriminated against like that's not purely 
where there's confusion. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I find that highly unlikely. Yeah. Or just a general depression. You really don't... You don't know. Yeah. If I've heard stories of many of them saying they want to go back to being what they were before, and it's like, oh. You know what would be interesting is if we could um, determine whether there was a, a higher rate of suicide among transgender people uh, since, uh, you know, the turn of the century. Because... Uh, you know, obviously, uh, transgenderism wasn't as uh, common. At least people weren't talking about it in the year, you know, 1910. So, I mean, if, if you could if you could plot a, a, an increasing trend um, of suicide among transgenders from now until the present day, it could indicate that, you know, perhaps there is a correlation between the two. Yeah, I yeah, think I that's think a rather interesting, interesting idea. idea. You're echoing. Echo. 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 Bernie Sanders. There's... Oh, it's Ethan. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was me. I have a good microphone. Yeah, so do I. So it's. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> is there anything else you can talk about, or is it? Are you being abducted by aliens, Luis? <laughs> I was gonna. I'm probably going to try to play a song at the end of the stream, but... The ADL. Yeah, I heard there's an island in the Caribbean that wants to join Canada. It will be like uh, the Puerto Rico of Canada. That's dumb. Canada is not nowhere near the Caribbean. Oh, Ethan no. said the ADL? I'm not familiar with Anti-Defamation that. League. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm terrible with acronyms, so anytime somebody mentions an acronym, it goes right in one ear and out the other. Um... Yeah, so that's like uh, the so Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, that's uh, the other one that... What is it, the ADLC or some weird shit? Like the that? SPLC? SPLC, yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, Tom, remember when Ramsey Paul ended up on the SPLC? Yeah, for uh, parody in, uh, in one of his videos. Yeah, that's... I've, I, one of the other things that's happening, feminists are now promoting STDs. It's like a women's rights thing. Yeah. I mean, there was this one chick on Twitter who said that she's proud of being a slut and got herpes. Oh, I think it was a Paul Joseph Watson video I found. That's what it was. I yeah. Got a I shared. Ugh, yeah, I watched that video gross. too. It's it's this this just wrong in so many levels. I would oh, agree. How are we having an S? That would be okay. What's next? Like, is are we going to have AIDS exception now? AIDS acceptance? Oh, I'm not accepting AIDS. Okay. Uh, well, Changing the subject, I want to know what's um, the argument with the Federal Reserve. Um, is the Federal Reserve... Nationalize the banking system. system. Yes, nationalize banking system. Oh, wait, you know, we're so, that makes us socialists. You can't, you can't nationalize the central bank with a fiat currency. It doesn't work. Yeah, I, I think that's a terrible Germany. idea. Add gold to it, then. It worked in Nazi Germany. The best way to clear out inflation and debt is to have the government provide all the currency. And therefore, the only way you borrow money is if you borrow the money through government bonds and interest-free loans. Once you do that, there's no more debt. That's what the, that's what the Central Bank uh, or the Federal Reserve does. The Federal Reserve is a private bank. Well, it's, it's a semi-autonomous uh, institution from the government. But it's still private. It's a private corporation. Bankers, economists on both the left and the right can tell you for a fact that, this, that the Federal Reserve is not a government institution. It's a private institution, which only has some slight regulations over it. I'm saying we should nationalize the entire thing, and the only currency is the currency that is provided directly by the Congress, which is their constitutional... Um, right to do so because that's what it says in the Constitution that Congress ha is the only people who can form the coin and determine its value. Okay, but you, you see, the reason fiat currency has value is because the government is in debt to the central bank because the government, like, the government sells bonds to the central bank and then they get certificates of indebtedness which we use as money. So if the government nationalized the central bank, then they would be just in debt to themselves, and it doesn't make any sense. 
Yes, because there's no such thing as a debt-free economy. Sure, man. Anyway, I want to go to a subject that happened earlier on the Rubin Report. I'm pretty sure some of you watched that. No, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. I, cause, um, no, yeah, so I, I, I want to ta- change the topic for a second, because, okay. Well, hold, hold on here. I, I just want to hear briefly what Lewis has to say. I was just saying, nobody, um, like, is the Federal Reserve a private-owned bank, or is it a nationalized bank, and what we should do with, with, the, with the Federal Reserve? Like, should we, like, uh, what we should do? How would we change, get rid of it, and what, how, uh, what should we replace it with? I think, I think that we just need to audit the Federal Reserve. We shouldn't abolish it or nationalize it or anything. They should just be held responsible. Yeah, audit. I mean, that, that would definitely be the the simplest and most forthright thing to do. And then, you know, if you wanted to go a more um, a top-down route, then you could, you could move on from there. But, yeah, that, that would definitely be the first thing that I would advocate for is just audit them. Um, and, at, at like, the... The wise seal said, um, "It's it's kind of half and half, like semi-autonomous, like you said. I think that's a good word, semi-autonomous." Yeah, well, here in Canada, we have the the Central Bank of Canada, which is an autonomous, a semi-autonomous institution, which means that it's in many ways it's run and funded by the government, but it it's it employs people like in the private sector, so it it kind of goes both ways, but it's it's definitely not nationalized. And it really isn't in most developed countries. It's a semi-autonomous institution. Okay, now to change the topic very quickly. Okay, so how many of you watched the Rubin Report? Uh, I've watched. I rather nope. like Dave Rubin, actually. Yeah, I've seen a couple episodes. Well, he interviewed not too long ago um, a comedian, one of my favorite comedians, by the way, uh, Stephen Fry. Um, and apparently people got into a fussy. Yeah, I, I actually saw that. The Guardian got into a major uproar because here's what happened. What Stephen Fry was talking about uh, censorship and uh, rape victims. Um, he was saying that rape victims who complain about drama, you know, drama on TV shows, complain about drama that involves rape and try to censor it should grow up. <laughs> yeah, he was basically talking about how self pity is is a disgusting emotion. And when people just constantly complain that they can't be subjected to this or that play because it has scenes of rape in it, it's 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 really um, a morally contemptible thing to do because unlike people who've actually experienced trauma, like war veterans who want to tr- who, who seek help to try to get over these triggers and their emotions, these social justice warriors, according to Stephen Fry, just want to wallow in their self pity, and he finds that completely disgusting. Which I, I mean, agree with. I mean, why? Why? I mean, uh, there. I, no offense to rape victims. Like, rape is one of the worst things that could happen next to seeing a war. I would not say it's worse than murder because that'd be just fucking stupid. But the thing is, why are we praising victim complexes? Why? Why do we say to war veterans, um, "Oh, you get poor health care," but then we turn around to rape victims and say, "Oh, you're a victim." Um, you're a victim for life. I mean, some of these people like to say that rape is worse than murder. Then they go on and accuse people being rape apologists, when in actuality, oh, if you yeah. say if you say rape is worse than murder, you're saying that p- victims of rape are are as good as dead. Okay, they I have a thing though. How many how many rape victims have committed suicide at the same time? Like a lot of veterans commit suicide and. I, I don't know the numbers on that, uh, but I did want to say that that probably the reason um, that it's so easy for uh, rape victims or alleged rape victims to garner sympathy is that they're largely female, and um, outside of the prison system anyway. Yeah, yeah, you can't minus the prison system. Other other than that, most rape victims are men because of prison. Right, uh, but it's far easier for a female, just biologically, to garner sympathy than it is yeah, for a Yeah, but if it's a male, they're uh, like, oh, men can't be raped because they hold institutional power or something stupid like that. I'm like that, yeah. that, I've heard that, and that is a very uh, you, detached you know, yeah, thing, thing to say. See, what happened yesterday was, okay, Kevin Logan made a video response to the user that guy T, and I watched part two. Oh, I subbed to that guy that guy T. It's an interesting. Kevin Logan uh, was complaining about how that guy T 
supports due process when it comes to rape victims because if you support due process <laughs> for for people like sorry I'm kind of um, I sorry I'm kind of on the slip of the tongue today but here's the thing uh, <clears throat> Kevin Logan said that if you believe that all rape allegations require a trial by jury or due process before any conviction then you are insulting the victim of rape. So if you believe in due process for rape allegations, then you are a rape apologist. Because most cases are true. So then I posted a comment stating the fact that less than 32% of all rape cases that involve actually going to court, only 32% of rape cases actually led to a conviction based on overwhelming Evidence and the rest is either the opposite, has been dismissed, or has been proven to be a hoax. And it goes against the... It, I mean, it's the same study that feminists like to use to say that only 8-10% to 10 of rape allegations are false, because that is highly misleading what they say, because the same study states that only 32% are convictions based upon overwhelming evidence. So when I posted that comment with the source... All Kevin Logan's fanboys did was accuse me of being a rape apologist, and they even went as far as to say that if you believe that a person should have a fair trial before going to prison as a convicted sex offender, they should be allowed to go to trial, then you are a rape apologist, and no, rape, um, and no rapist is innocent until proven guilty. Well, I mean, come on. Your name's Nero. Obviously, you're a rape apologist. You're probably a rapist yourself. I mean, <laughs> me. That's you know, logic, that's, yeah. That's my, that's my part-time job. I don't think rape anybody apology. takes Kevin Logan seriously. I don't know why you, why you bother uh, arguing with him. I yeah, must concur. I, mean, I, I find him funny, but he's just retarded. I mean, he's funny in both the sense he's retarded, but the, I will give him credit. He can be entertaining at times, because... Me and him share some senses of humor, except that I'm more darker than he is when it comes to humor. Oh yeah, I, th I think I, I think he, he did response to like Sargon once, and it was just like terrible. He did Sargon? Yeah. To, he did response to Sargon more than Social Democrat did. Uh, we should go back to on that topic. Uh, Social Democrat one. Um, do you think Sargon Makad is right wing? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, I think he's. Just... Oh. Whoa. I think most of my comrade and would deem him as a degenerate. I don't think he's degenerate. At least uh, I I, th I feel like you're using that word too freely. That's something that I uh, come across quite a lot. It's just <clears throat> that just kind of pe pejorative uh, stone slinging, and um, yeah, I I don't ha I don't really have a I have disagreements. Lewis with him, is a but... vampire. What's that? Lewis is a vampire. I'm just messing. I mean, just look at his teeth. I don't, I don't think I don't think the Sargon is a degenerate. As Cater said, yeah, I, I have points of uh, contention with him, but you know, uh, overall, he seems like an all right guy. Yeah, I've never seen him do anything. Uh, I'm not terribly familiar with him, but I've never seen him do anything that is against his own stated principles. Um, yeah. Or if he, he did, you know, then he'd say, you know, like ah, I fucked up, right? So I can. Up, I mean, yeah, he can be a condescending he's, he's like, worker, but here's uh, the, you know, can't we all? Here's the evidence that Social Democrat used to prove that uh, Sargon of Akkad is right wing. He's I need to look up the Social Democrat guy because uh, I, I keep hearing you, you, all of you talk yeah. about him, but I don't know who this, he is. I'm going to say this, though. This clown shoe says we're obsessed with him, yet he literally goes into Google Hangouts and He's probably watching this live stream it. right now. Mm, I doubt well, it. I don't know. I might, I might agree with you. Every time I'm talking Wait a minute. You, you I, let me finish what I was saying. Um... Like, well, watch his, his video response to obsessive trolls. He's the one who's come obsessive on. trolls. Come his on. proof, his proof that Sargon of Akkad is right wing is based on the fact that Sargon of Akkad in his video called "Individualism versus Collectivism," which that's where points of disagreement between me and him go on because of well, he cut. Yeah, whatever. Um, Sargon of Akkad quoted Hayek, that um, Austrian economist, on history, as well as the whole debate between individualism and collectivism, and because he merely agreed with Hayek on one issue, or multiple issues, 
And because of the fact that Hayek himself praised Pinochet means that Sargon of Akkad is a right-wing scumbag. I mean, come on. This is a genetic fallacy. He's basically uh, saying... Oh, yeah. How'd that happen to a friend? The, the, the genetic fallacy is basically where um, apparently a person's beliefs are invalidated just because the source of which they got their opinions, beliefs, or even facts, in which cases they are, um, if they get them from a source that the other person may not approve of, then it's genetically false, which is bullshit. See, even though, okay, let's say that Hayek did support Pinochet to his death. Well, that doesn't invalidate everything Hayek says, and Sargon of Akkad has every right to agree with Hayek on whatever Sargon agrees with, even if he disagrees with Pinochet. In fact, didn't Sargon Vakad yeah. speak out against Pinochet in some of his videos? Not that I know of, but either way, I think it's it's a manifestly, as soon as you stated what the argument was, it's a manifestly absurd thing to say. It's exactly like what happened with um, Donald Trump when he quoted Mussolini, you know, I'd rather oh, live yeah. than than 100 years as a lamb. And yeah, yeah. Um, everybody was, lost their minds and said retract it. And he's like, nah, I like it. It's, it's a good... Yeah, good I, I, like, guess what? Hold on. Yeah, okay. I just want to ask you something. Um, what what exactly was the... Um, were, you, were you engaging this uh, social democrat guy in a debate or, or some of his subscribers or something? I mean, what were you attempting I mean, to accomplish by... Once, because he apparently was trolling his Chilean subscribers, which is bullshit. Well, he blocked, yeah, Tom for that. and then yeah, I think he's blocked all of us. No, he hasn't blocked me, because I can still talk to him. Yeah, you two have secret meetings, don't you? No. It's just, I run into like an Omari general, and he's just like a little shit, and he likes to say, like, how... He's, like, insulting me, and I just ignore him at that point. I'm like, I don't even want to hear from him at that point. You know I mean, what, he's a I, hypocrite and a coward in a sense because, sure, I might block people here. every now and then if they're like spamming me or they are they're trying to self-advertise to me. But uh, in you the long try, run, I'm trying to get social democrat on this hangout. Send him an invite. I know he lives in Australia, but I don't know. Maybe he's still away. <laughs> oh, he, he can't yeah. join this live. He he blocked us, so that means he can't join. Oh. Well, I mean, Delta says he can still contact us. Oh, I, yeah, I, I still can. I remember However, when there's a Nero trolled Scotty M. I want to bring that up because that whole thing with the Scotty M, like the, the shouting yeah. message. That's my most popular video for some reason. Like, I only uploaded it last week, and that video already has 220. Well, I shared views. it with a couple left. I think I put it in on Mario General, and all the leftists loved it. You were uh, you were quite good uh, when you were debating him, um, and I wasn't familiar with this guy before, but. Um, uh, he got extremely uh, emotional over what you were saying. That's it's always the worst thing that can happen in a debate is when somebody says they disagree, but then they get too emotional as to tell you why, and then they just start insulting you. And that's what he did. He He's just kept saying, person. "You're a fool. You're a fool." Oh, he thought, he's like, you're the one who's the dumb fuck sack. He said something like that. I was like, oh Dude, I mean, my. he's a hypocrite because, like, he's saying that I have a black and white v uh, view on individualism, yet Scotty himself holds a black and white view on collectivism. And I also want to state this, and I think Cater brought this up in the comments section. What Scott, what we, me and Delta were trying to do was we were trying to discuss collectivism as a philosophical or ethical standpoint, as in things should be done for the greater good, like when collectivism is applied to democracy, democratic decisions are made for the common good. When society, like if the majority of society believes that pedophiles and rapists and serial killers should be imprisoned to protect kids, family, and whatnot, if they decide to do that, and they even elect the people to do so and carry out the legislation, um, that is an act of collectivism because the collective, the majority of the people are telling these people, we do not give a fuck about the individual rights of pedophiles, rapists, or serial killers. We believe that if they're convicted on a fair trial for their crimes, they need to go to prison. And there's something wrong with that statement. And in the end, that's what we were talking about. Me and Delta were talking about collectivism from a philosophical or ethical viewpoint. Scotty was trying to shorten or broaden the conception of collectivism to economics only, 
which was well, just that's the thing with him and I'm gonna say this. This is my view. This is why I have such a problem to agree with libertarians and communists. They both bring everything like economically. Then when you try to divert it, they'll like freak out that they their like their brain explodes. Yeah, it would depend what school of um of economics the particular or what, what kind of libertarian I should say. But that is something I've run into a lot. It, it is very frustrating. Hey, with to... Marxists, it's Marxists uh, the most. Marxists are most guilty of this. Oh yes, but when you're trying to talk about foundational ethics, and they're like, "Yeah, but what about economics?" <laughs> like, well, they kind of they, they tell oh, me you worship me. the nation. They tell me you worship the nation. Well, you worship the economy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but um, back to what back to what you were saying, Nero. Um, yeah, that that's exactly what he was doing. He was talking about. Uh, collectivism and individualism um, only, or collectivism specifically, only through a uh, lens of political theory. Um, and you were trying economic to talk about economic theory. Yeah, economic theory. And you. I were, mean, you were like he, he, when I, we, me and Delta were talking about the family unit being a collectivist entity, and even though um, De, uh, Scotty and his friend Soldrift, no offense to Soldrift, I think he's actually pretty cool, but. The two of them were saying how the family unit is not collectivist, and when we asked for proof, Scotty M was like, "How does the family? What does the family unit have to do with the price of cheese?" What oh yes, sure. I see. Was, in, what did really he say? Um, I think that. Sorry, were you going to say something, Delta? I was going to say Ethan left, so I was like, "Oh, so I've got to see it then." <laughs> he kept he kept dropping out. I assume there's something wrong with his connection. Um. I hope not. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, the I don't know how you could really argue that any kind of proper and a, f a family that functions in any way that we would conceive of as proper or healthy could ever be individualistic. Um, uh, it just seems like it would inherently lead to an unhealthy family relationship. You know, so if you had like I don't one. Know, yeah. I mean, unless you want every daughter to be like Miley Cyrus, individualist parenting's a pretty bad idea. Yeah, yeah I mean, it'd be like, <clears throat> I consider like Anne Rand, um, uh, char char characters from her book, you know, like running a family. That would be fucking terrifying. <laughs> oh, it would be. It's I'm sorry, I don't want Miley Cyrus. We... all day. <laughs> we already have too many Miley Cyruses. We don't need more. Enough of them. Give them well, free I, mean, I, think, I think we're seeing the effects of individualism on the family today with uh, the initiation of no-fault divorce because more, uh, more than any other time in human society, people are free to just leave a marriage because you know they just feel like it. They got bored. And I think mm -hmm. that's an incredibly individualist uh, uh, take on marriage to just be able to leave and not have any responsibilities and, in fact, in effect, gain from it in the form of alimony and child support. So That's an excellent I, I really think, Yeah, the institution of marriage can, can work in a family. You have to have a, some sort of collectivism to keep uh, the family unit intact. Can I invite Liber Can I invite Scotty M on here? What? Oh, uh, you'd have to ask Ethan. I mean, this is his his thing, which is no, it's he's Delta. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yeah, you can. If he, okay. If, he, if he's I'm inviting him on, so we can make fun of. I'm just messing him. Um, I don't know. Well, let's just see what he has to say. Let's go back to the family unit thing. Let's see how that goes. Let's try to be civil this time, unless he stops being civil. Well, Ethan was waiting to have a civil conversation with him. I was like, why, why, why don't you, and how you have him and I have a debate or something like that? But, like, here, here's the th issue with that. Like, Ethan was talking about how we were not being civil with Scotty, but the only I person... Was. I mean, I, I can be a troll at times, I can be a drama whore at times, but you know what? The person in that particular situation who started to be uncivilized in a debate was Scotty. He was the one who started to insult me, he was the one who started to get emotional with me, started yelling at me, he was the one who made the situation into a literal uncivil discussion. So why is he telling me to be civil with Scotty when Scotty should be informed to be civil as well by Ethan's standard? But he was like, you're the one who's the dumb fuck sack or something retarded. I was like, okay, then. I mean, it's not, it, I mean he, no one can complain that I use ad hominem. Like, people always say, oh, you use ad hominem attacks against me in your videos. But then they turn around and then they use insults as well. Like, when Social Democrat made that video response to me, he was like, 
um, oh, that's an ad hominem, Nero. That's he was like, oh, he's like, the same act. moron. He's like, the same moron or something like I mean, that. he insults me several times throughout the video. He calls me an idiot, a brain-dead idiot. Yeah, you're such a, a drama moron. queen, Nero. A moron and oh, always has been. To be fair, Nero, you used to be uh, part of the... Uh, the communist community on YouTube. I mean, you went on to Social Democrats hangouts, and then to, to all of a sudden just be like, "No, I'm a right winger now." And like, I, I don't know. I, I, if if I were him, I could maybe perceive that as being a stab in the back. So I mean, I can see why he's upset. I mean, it's the same with Manuel because Manuel, um, he only, only, even though his form of joining the right, which I really wouldn't consider myself right wing. I'm more center left, in all honesty. Because... Oh, he went back to the left. He was like trolling. He kind of you're, just... still, you're still giving on neo fascist podcasts. <laughs> That's my exactly. impression. I mean, Manuel is a clever troll. He's always been a clever troll. I mean, I actually met him in a neo Nazi chat on some other app or something like that. And... I think he was a communist, and he's he's been a Marxist for ages. I think I think I mean, Manuel's just very open-minded about things. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I I think uh, I think what uh, our wise seal leader said was probably true, in that um, you know when 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 people begin thinking in these um, very <clears throat> uh, militaristically defined. Um, allegiances towards different ideological leanings, not even ideologies themselves, but just a leaning to them, uh, that uh, uh, it fosters a sense of almost xenophobia, you know, a tribal otherism, where you have to attack the whoever it is. You know, if so if you're, you're left-wing, you have to attack those evil right-wingers and vice versa. And that's something which uh, is really troublesome, really it ruins any kind of conversation that you can have, because uh, like uh, you know, like I can have a perfectly constructive conversation with you, Nero, and you're not even a right wing guy, right? So, yeah, but I mean, bear in mind that this is a, a public forum, and to some extent, by you know m doing these hangouts and making videos on YouTube, where we're trying to entertain people to an extent. I mean, we, we're trying to you know explore ideas and make arguments, but at the same time, we want people to, you know, pay attention to what we're saying. And by fostering, like, this in-group, out-group, tribalistic mentality of, you know, uh, if you're not with us, you're against us, uh, it's, it's very entertaining, and it stirs up a lot of drama. So I, Are you accusing me of being boring? No, <laughs> absolutely not. How oh, did... no, Katie, you're not boring at all. It's... Why, thank you, Delta. Hmm. When well, all I've the world some... is mine, your death will be I've seen that. painless. I've seen I've seen people I know they shift to the left and it's like I kind of I'm, I'm like hey I feel freaking betrayed and I don't speak to them for a while. There's like a particular person that happened with. Well, let me clarify. And the gang that him and I they kind of they kind of attacked me in my position, so it's, it's, it got to the point where I'm like I want nothing to do with them anymore. Right. Well, that, let me clarify and say that I don't have anything against tribalism in general. It's a good thing, uh, but I do have something against uh, notions of uh, tribalism. In regards to undefined groups, you know, if you're going to be tribalistic about something, whether oh, uh, like football, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I get like nationalism, yeah. nations, or something like that. I'm like, okay, that's a that language, <laughs> culture, values. It has to be. What, what do you what do you describe as what, what in your definition is an undefined group? Uh, oh, so an undefined group would be the left, right? It, it I shouldn't say undefined, a poorly defined, unspecified group, just to be specific there. Um, so, like, the left, the right, uh, the, the people, uh, humanity, these kind of extraordinarily oh, abstract oh, generalizations. Here's the thing, though, Cater. I, I do absolutely agree with you on that. However, yeah. we're, I, we're dealing with, uh, like, the context of YouTube here. And when we say the left, I'm sure we all know which people we're referring to. Because Kevin Logan, people, and the people who are generally TV. described as being left-wing, they all, they're all they all in their own insular communities. They all congregate together on the same hangouts. And, you know, oh, even yeah. though the left as a term is, is not, is, is very loosely defined. Well, yeah, of course I get what you're saying. Really, yeah. like, hang out with each other. Same thing with the right. I mean, we're all of 
very different political political affiliations, but we're all sort of generally described as right wing, I, I think. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not ideological. That's what I would consider myself, and you might disagree with that, but we agree on many issues, and that's really what makes people on the left, or and some to an extent on the right, to uh, make us leftist or rightist. It's generalization. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> well, in regards to what you were saying, <clears throat> that uh, yeah, of course I know what you mean when you say the left. But in all honesty, it is a particular segment of the left. It's not just the left in general. And so you could yeah, I'm not I'm not saying don't ever say that or you always have to be really pedantic. But uh, uh, for, <clears throat> for 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 a point of clarity, I would prefer that that was generally the case that people were just more specific in what they were saying. Uh, because generalizations are useful, but there has to be some specificity in the generalization. Um, and once it gets too broad, too abstract, then it becomes useless. Uh, yeah. It's like when people define God as uh, love or the universe. You know, it's an abstraction which has absolutely no import. Or like, or like, or like these lefties' abstract art. <laughs> yeah, abstract art. Right. It can be anything. It can be anything you want, which means it's nothing. Yeah, I mean, and taken to an extreme, like these these uh, categorizations, like the left, they can almost have a, a puritanical uh, function to them. Like you could say, you know, you're not a true leftist because you believe X, Y, Z. Indeed. It, it yeah. Oh, like, I got attacked like that all crazy because I wasn't like a degenerate social justice warrior when I was on the left. I was a very social conservative. I'm like, you're not a real socialist because I didn't uphold their degenerate ideas. So that that's why I'm much I'm I much, I'm much more inclined to attach myself to something like a movement or an actual organization, and then you know I would take up a a defensive stance from there and say I am of this thing because it is clearly defined and it has tenets and you can say what is um, so okay pick my fav one of my favorite artists uh, 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 Tommaso Marinetti. F.T. Marinetti of the Futurist Manifesto, founder of Futurism. Futurism had very defined tenets, and you could say, you know, if you were um, against the youth, you were anti-futurist. If you were for the past simply for points of romanticization, you were anti-futurist, you were not a futurist, you couldn't be one. Um, right? So there, there's a clearly defined um, sphere um, of identity there. And I just think that's important to, you know, delineate yeah, absolutely. I agree. Oh, okay. I see people like they knock on a lot of young people. Like they're like, oh, oh, you people, you young people are so dumb and uneducated. There's a lot of them who are, but not everyone in there. Uh, well, I mean, there's this renter that I'm subscribed to. Um, she is 14 years old, and I didn't know she was 14 until she admitted it. She's very intelligent, and she knows what she's talking about. She has a lot of informed opinions, and <clears throat> she can utterly debunk people. Yes, yeah, she's 14, but I honestly thought she was in her 20s. I didn't know she was 14 until she admitted that she was 14. You know, age, like, like in many cases, uh, <clears throat> who, who is this your, your intelligence is Hold on a second. Well, who are you talking about, Nero? Um, what was, like, she left YouTube like a year ago or two, but... Uh, she was a YouTube user that I watched a lot, and she did th videos um, on social justice warriors and stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, she was in her teenage years, and there's also another user who says that she's only 18. Um, and I do believe her channel satire, but only to a certain degree. And I, I, I think, think I know. Find... <laughs> yeah, I mean, their age and maturity and intelligence. In, in most cases, a 10-year-old is probably immature and pretty downright stupid, but then again, I can actually show you some videos and articles about 10-year-olds who actually graduate from college. There's this one 10-year-old boy who graduated from college in a degree in, um, what do you call that, uh, astronomy. Um, so, in reality, in... In many cases, maturity and age and intelligence, they all have to do with each other, but in some cases, a 10-year-old could probably be more intelligent than all of us. And that's why I favor a meritocratic system in terms of voting, because what we have today is eight is this magic number, and once you're 18, you can vote, even if you're dumb as hell, while the 13-year-old 
who could probably outmatch him in any sort of debate, political or not, uh, he has to wait ten more years or so before he, he well, or she can out. Ho hold on there, Nero. I mean, I feel like you're romanticizing uh, out of out of some fairly irregular happenings. Um, in my experience, most 13-year-olds are not smarter than, you know, 20, 30, or 40-year-olds. Well, in my experience, um, most 20 or 30-year-olds are pretty dumb and stupid. That's me. I mean, oh, that's I didn't say that they were smart. I just said that most 13-year-olds are not smarter than them. And that's, that's simply because of brain development. that hasn't happened yet completely. But also, um, it, it is true that I've been seeing a at least in these spheres of political discourse, a, a lot of, and I've mentioned this before, but just really bright people that are extremely young. So take, for instance, if you remember the gaming patriot. Uh, he's only 14, I believe. He's really smart for his age, very intelligent, and, and very well-mannered, too. Um, or, or even you, Nero, and Delta, right? Uh, you're pretty young. You're, what, like both uh, 18, 19? I'm 19. He's I'm 16. 16, I think. Oh, you're 16. Yeah, see what I mean? And Ethan's, you know, he's only 16. <clears throat> and Lewis see, is... I'm coming at uh, this never point. mind. Lewis is a poor example, but whatever. Nero, I'm surprised that you're 16. I thought that you were like 19 or 20. Oh, Social Democrat thinks I sound like I'm 20. I don't see it, though. I think it's because I mean, you have a, a sort of a well, rasp to your voice. Well, people like that think that anyone who's right-wing is just unintelligent and dumb, and, they're all, and the only leftists are smart. I have a rasp in my voice. So what do you mean by that? That? Yeah, you kind of go back to your throat, if you see what I'm saying, on yeah. the ends of your sentences. It makes you sound older. Yeah, I guess. And also, people say I look like I'm in my 20s as well. I mean, Delta USA thinks I look like Angry Joe. A little bit. That is. Oh, he's a video game reviewer, and apparently... I think Vlad even saw what I looked like once, and he could tell you that I kind of look like Angry Joe. Yeah, there's some resemblance there. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't get it. I mean, people say I sound older than I am. Some people say I'm more intelligent than I am. Some people say I look older than I am, but I just don't get it. Then there's people who say you're always an idiot. Yeah, but that's just an opinion, in all honesty, because even though intelligence can be measured effectively, in the end... You can, in some cases, it's an opinion because Social Democrat One likes to call you, Ethan, and even Vlad on many occasions idiots, morons, pathological liars. But these are just his opinions, and not to mention insults, making him a hypocrite further. Uh, these are just insults and opinions and nothing more. So they can call no, no. me an idiot all they want. It's not an objective <laughs> fact that I am. Right, but it's not it's not impossible for someone to and I'm not trying to say that you're an idiot. I'm just saying that it's not impossible to uh, make an argument for uh, say I don't know my objective stupidity off of the things I've said. So if I had said you know like, the Earth is only six thousand years old, uh, that is a oh you suspended Delta. I don't care. It's it's a demonstrably dumb thing to say, and uh, I know that uh, that's what you hold to Delta, but. It's, it's, well, you're it's, unintelligent. If you say you're unintelligent and you're crazy, it's like, rather be called crazy. Okay, call me crazy. I don't care. I mean, Delta. I mean, yeah, Delta. Most I do. actually, when I, I look at his channel occasionally because I'm subscribed to him, and sometimes yeah. his feed appear on my YouTube page, and he thumbed up videos about how evolution's debunked and all evolution's debunked, and therefore God did it. I mean, first of all, that is what what do you call it? The God of the Gaps theory. It's basically saying, oh... I don't well, think these people necessarily believed in God. It's just they're... We, we can't explain this, therefore, God did it. That lemon tree, I, don't, I can't explain how that grew. Therefore, that magical unicorn from the fourth dimension did it. I uh, mean, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad you raised that point, Nero. I want to I bring this to, to all of your attentions. Where do... I, I think I already know where Nero and Delta stand, but... Where, if any, do you think the church should sit beside the state? Are you for separation of church and state, or are you for unification? I know America, to... yeah, that has to be like that. But for the Europeans, I think they could they could have a unification of church and state if the Europeans wanted it. If they really wanted well, it, they could have it. Delta. Depends. I mean, Fry, in his recent interview, 
Um, he actually says that he's not a big supporter. Like, he doesn't think having a church and state completely separated means that society can't be healthy, strong, or even secular, because where he grew up in, the state and the church are completely unified, and the result, most of the people in his country are atheists, they're secular, and they're all for civil rights. Well, here in the United States, we have a separation church and states, and 74% of Americans believe angels have walked on the earth. Yeah, yeah. that was a bad example by Fry, by the way. That was a very bad example. Um, he, he took that as somehow that, that somehow demonstrated that once you have um, church and state um, as one, then the natural progression is towards, um, and this is something you'll always find in liberals, is that the natural progression is towards secularism with no religion whatsoever. But of course, if you look to the Middle East, the same thing, the same union of church and state is there, but the people have become more fervent, if anything else, and their faith has spread. Uh, so he's just discounting the historical situation which led to the exasperation of Christianity. And I don't think the, the union of church and state has had much to do with that, historically speaking. I mean, like... Cater, well, Cater, I... in regards to the question you asked earlier, since uh, I didn't get a chance to respond, um, I mean... I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, like, I, I'm an atheist. I don't know if you know what that is, but essentially, I don't. <laughs> That's what I describe myself as. Yeah, like to to me, the the question of whether God exists or not doesn't really matter. But I'm definitely not an anti-theist because I think that religion is necessary to foster social cohesion, and it it's generally good for people's well-being, and it it fosters community bonds and. For, because it helps the poor and it's a, a good uh, system of charity. So I think that religion and uh, church going should certainly be encouraged, but you don't need to have the church involved in government to do that. I mean, just look at the United States of America, which arguably it has the greatest separation of church and state among any country. But I would, I mean, many parts of the United States are incredibly religious. And over time, I think that there is generally a trend among religious people to I think that I think that people will over time will either gravitate towards atheism or they'll gravitate towards religious fundamentalism and what we're seeing right now with the fall of a lot of you know moderate Christian churches like you know the Anglican Church or the Presbyterian Church uh, coincides with a rise in a lot of like really hardcore fundamentalists Christian churches like the Anabaptists or you know, um, uh, what, what's that other one? The the Pentecostals, uh, who are very very fervent in their beliefs, and I think that that just illustrates this trend towards like a polarization of religious beliefs. So you don't need like this. I, I don't really think the state plays a part in that. I think it's just a natural progression of things. It really depends and, on the um, religion, though, because Catholicism wait, wait. has always been state entwined, like with the, during the Middle Ages, and even like with Franco, the Catholic Church had a huge role in the government. Two, the two things, though. Um, one, the Pentecost. I mean, the Pente. I'm saying their name wrong. Uh, Pentecostals. I mean, it depends on which one, because there are several different forms of that one church. Well, they do share a lot of beliefs. Um, the Pentecostal church churches around where I live, uh, they are highly liberal. Um, they even favor secularism. In fact, I went to a page of a local Pentecostal website, and they support transgender rights. I mean, okay, but you, you can be, you can be a you fundamentalist and still hold religion. liberal political beliefs. What I mean is, they they are very, their lives are very entwined in religion. For yeah, instance, they are. I, know, I know some Pentecostal people. Liberal. They they like speak in tongues and they go to church like three times a week, and they're just yeah. very deeply religious, more religious than yeah. like Anglican people. I mean, Pentecostal people, I mean, a lot of them, at least the people that I know who are Pentecostal and think, in fact, I think Donald Trump is Pentecostal. I mean, they tend to be more liberal on social and political views, but in terms of their actual actual religious beliefs, they're very, very uh, convicted in their religious beliefs. Yeah. And that, I think that's what you mean. I mean, yeah. when, I, when I say the word ultra-religious, I'm meaning ultra-right-wing religious conservative. I'm not talking about people like Neil Yiannopoulos or, you know, moderate conservatives, so to speak. I'm talking okay, about, I'm, like West, sure you I'm talking about people like the West... Like, you I'm talking about people like the... Wahhabi oh, fundamentalists. Oh, Westboro oh, Baptist oh, Church, the Wahhabists, like the Saudis. I'm talking about people like the Westboro Baptist Church, like those guys 
are the kind of people I oppose. I don't necessarily think that Christianity is a bad thing. It kind of strengthens societies. I mean, you notice well, how all countries... That let have me interject here for a second. The Westboro Baptist Church, um, as odious and annoying as those people are, um, haven't really ever done anything that warrants the kind of attention they've got. Like, yeah, I can understand why it would be a very um, malodorous to see them picketing a grave of somebody who was a loved one of yours, or even who you knew tangentially. Or many changed. soldiers, primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> to make this yeah, big I mean, media fuss about it, and, uh, you know, go on, oh, every time something bad happens with somebody who's religious, they're like, you're basically like the Westboro Baptist Church. You know, like, it's it's a um, uh, a distraction from, from things real problems caused by religion. Like, this isn't yeah, well, really a problem. I, I think the Westboro Baptist Church, it's like, it's a perfect fusion of religion and performance art. Like, the Westboro Baptist Church, <laughs> they're, they're like the Gigi Allen of religion. I don't know if you know who that is. I but, do. That's a good example. Yeah. I do have one, I do have one thing else to say. Okay. You know, Stan Neely, your girlfriend's pelvis. And, no, that one wasn't a metaphor. <laughs> That's Let's house, it, right? Yeah, that's house. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, it's been amusing, but I have to go. So uh, I'll see you some other time. Maybe we, should, maybe we should cut the show off here because a lot of people. Yeah, left. we should. Yeah. I'm just gonna play some Black Ops. Have fun, you guys. Oh okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Good times. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Final one words. Last thing. One last thing. Can I say one last thing? Um. Yeah. Final words. Uh, can you? We should try to get, have a debate, like try a civil "quote unquote" debate with Scotty M in the future. I think that'd be an interesting video to say. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I'll try to see if you can talk that up with him and get it. And I have Probably. one last thing to say. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me on, Delta. I appreciate. No, no problem. It. I'm kind of I'm taking over the alt right stuff now. I see. Commander Delta. I'll lead it, and I'll get all the lefties in my comment section. Okay, uh, Vlad, uh, see you later, I guess. Yeah, adios. Any, anything else to say, Tom, or are you good? No, I'm golden. All right. Bye. I to say in Nero, Roman, Potassium, not the Levistock. We're out. See ya, folks. <laughs>